Boa tarde a todos, sejam bem-vindos a mais uma sessão do World Camp Lisboa 2023. Daqui a breves instantes vamos de novo fazer uma viagem até ao futuro próximo. Lucas Giovanni é o CTO da Verzoa, uma empresa portuguesa de, de agência de, de marketing. É também o fundador da Uncle Technologies no Brasil. O Lucas tem 10 anos de experiência no desenvolvimento web e no PHP e tem também diversas contribuições para a comunidade open source. Esta vai ser uma apresentação em inglês, à altura de fazer a mudança de linguagem. So today, Lucas will give us a glimpse and a hands-on overview of what is coming from the great features from PHP 8 onwards. So welcome, a warm welcome to Lucas. Thank you. It's on. Hi everyone. Hi, very nice to, to be here. Well, um, so yeah, that's it. I think Philip talked Uh, with the front ends in the room. Now it's my turn to talk to the back ends in the room. We're going to talk a little bit about the PHP and the journey between uh, since 5.3 until 8.2 now. Um, the point of this talk is to present new features of PHP 8 and um, well, and how we can use it, these new features. This new, this new features. Um, It's very common that uh, as a PHP developer, as a backend developer, you just update the PHP on your server, but you don't realize what is new on how can you improve your code, and you're still maybe thinking on how, um, on, on the same way you did before, like when you were writing code on 5 or PHP 7, right? Uh, but yeah, that's me, I'm, I'm Lucas. I'm the CTO at the Digital Market Agency Vizoa here in Portugal, and also PHP Portugal co-organizer with my friend Caneco here. We're doing some meetups around Portugal. It's very, it's very nice. Uh, you can you can reach me on Twitter. Um, and yeah, but how it's how it's going to work today? I'm going to show you uh, a piece of code, usually in a very old version of PHP, and we're going to talk about the problems of the co this code and how can you maybe improve it and how can you apply those new features of PHP 8 on this code, all right, to make it better. Uh, but before that, just a quick overview on the PHP versions that it's out of there. Um, we are now officially on the PHP 8.2, which means that the entire family of the PHP 7, it's no longer supported by the community. So even for active support or for security support, it's not even support anymore. And PHP 8, it's also losing his support as a secured, uh, security support update. So by November or September, I'm not, not quite sure, uh, we're going to lose support to also to PHP 8.0, which means that PHP 8.1 and 8.2 is the, uh, well, the best option for your new projects and if you didn't update your projects or your server yet, it's better do it because uh, even for security, it's the best way to go, right? So let's jump in to some code um, um, and see how can we improve our code, all right? So imagine this class that we have here. Uh, it's a very simple class. It's a, well, a pet. We have a pet class and, well, everything that my, my, my class here have is just uh, my pet has a name, right? So I have a property name which is a string, and I have two methods to set the name of my pet and to get the name of my pet. That's very simple because it's a name, it's just a string, right? Um, so, well, we can see that I'm typing here a string directly on my properties and on my methods as well, on the parameters of my method. So, of course, if I instantiate this and initiate this class uh, and I set the name for bingo, for example, I'll get a string back. Right, that's very straightforward, that's cool, it's fine, everyone do, does that. But on PH, before PHP 8.0, what about this type of situation? Where I have, for example, a game class, where I have a score, which could be an integer or a float. Uh, before PHP 8, it was not possible to deal with these situations, right? I, well, I'm gonna need to put without a type here, I can use type because it could be integer or it could be float. 
And even on my methods, I could receive anything. What we usually do on this situation is to have a denotation, right? Denotation up there to have like, to help on our ID, for example, to help us to, to, to set as an integer or a float. The problem with that is that it's just a notation up there. If I initiate this class and set the score as a string, it's gonna work. And I try to get back the score as a string, it's gonna work because this here is just, just a notation, right? Before PHP 8.0, it was, it was not possible to have this inside. We can try to fix this code um, to put something like this. Uh, we can have an if inside my set method, like ah, to check if it's actually an integer and actually, or actually a float. And if not, I can just throw an exception to say, hey, I just need here integer and float for this. But it's a lot of work, right? I need to do it like every class or every method to check, et cetera. So before PHP 8.8, it was not possible to do, um, to do that to a different. And PHP 8 presents us with union types, which is exactly having the possibility to define different or multiple types for my properties or for my methods. So here in this example, the same that we did before, validating the, the, the types of my, my methods, I could just use in the pipe here and have now um, a validation inside the runtime of PHP. Which means that now, if I try to set a string, PHP itself can validate for me and say that, hey, you just need, you just can use integer or float on this situation. Well, um, that's very good. It's very good to have the security on your code. And you, you're not limited to just two types. You can use more than one type, more than two types. You can do something like this. I promise nobody's gonna judge you if you do like this thing, like I, I want to accept everything. Uh, imagine this, I have this collection and add item could be anything uh, you could do so. But PHP also gave you this um, mixed, which basically everything, right? So if you want to, you can use something like this. So that's union types on, on, on PHP. And that's very good for safety, your code with types, yeah, right? Well, jumping into the next example, uh, another piece of code that we can try to improve with PHP. Imagine this situation where I have a sweet case, very common, we write sweet case all the time, right? Um, but what's the problem here with the default, uh, default of this, the switch on PHP? Imagine that I have a, a value here, which is a string two, and I have three cases, zero, one, and two. What happens if I try to echo the variable string? It's gonna work, right? It's gonna set the string variable to Lisboa because switch in PHP is not, uh, comp it's not strict comparison, right? If I have a string in here and I have an integer here, it's gonna work. It's gonna set the string as, uh, this variable string as Lisboa, okay? So this could be a problem Right? because it's not a strict comparison, could lead you to some error sometime. Uh, and another situation is that you also, if you don't have a case, if I change it here for number three, for example, and you don't have any case that match the switch, um, PHP is gonna just warning you that this variable string was not set because I'm setting the, the variable inside the case. Can you see it here? I'm, I'm setting the string variable inside the case. So if I try to echo the string variable here, PHP is just gonna, just gonna warn me, it's not gonna throw me in any, any type of error. So if I try to use the variable string along in my code and another part of my code, it could lead you to some, some error because you don't have the string variable defined. Well, uh, we can try to fix this again. We can have a default on our switch that actually is gonna throw an, an exception uh, and say that, hey, this is no, no case for a value, so go there and well, use a correct case for this. But we still not valid validating our, our, well, string over there. And well, if I try to echo this now because of my default, it's gonna throw me an exception. PHP 8 gave us the match expression, which is probably one of my favorite, fa fa favorite features so far, which is 
uh, a new, new way to do kind of a sweet case, a fancy sweet case where you can, um, well, have a lot of options and a lot of safety on your code. To start, match is expression, which means that I can basically echo directly, or I can return it directly, or I can even attach it to a variable. We're going to see that further. Um, it's a street comparison. So if I have here a value that's a two needs to be an integer, which means that needs to match one of the cases on my left side of my match, right? The left side of match is your conditions, and the right side is the return related to that condition. So this is a street comparison, so which means that you need to be the same type. Um, so here in this situation, it's the same as we did before with the switch. The whole code of switch could be replaced this entire like this. I'm gonna, well, if I try to echo this, I'm gonna echo, yeah, this board. You see that it's matching in street matching over there. If I try to switch, uh, if I try to, to validate a different um, a different value that does not exist on, my, exist on my match, you see that PHP itself already take care of that and already throw an error saying that it's not a value, value um, defined, it's, it's not a value defined on your match, right? So the whole code that we had with switch could be replaced entirely by this match. Like I said, it's a very powerful expression and a power feature of PHP. It's expression, you can attach it to variable. So if you want to define a variable, you can straightforward set as a match here and the return of this validation is gonna be uh, attached to this variable. So it's very, it's very clean code, it's very nice code to have. Uh, like I said, you can return it directly. Imagine that you have a function and you want to do a validation, you don't have to attach variables, etc. You can just return directly from your code here. Um, since match its expression and you have a condition on the left and the return on the right, you can also uh, do any type of conditions on, on the left part and any type of returns on the right. So what I mean by that is that imagine that I have this function, bar, for example, that uh, accept an integer age and you want to verify if the person is under 18 or over 18. Uh, you I can return a match expression directly and see that I have the condition already here on the left. I don't need to do any if or anything or anything like that. I can just do the condition directly here on the left here. So PHP is gonna, um, is gonna try to match all the conditions. The first one that, that accept that is gonna be returned on this function, right? Um, I can do the same uh, here, for example, uh, with this, I can validate ages and I can have a default value. Same as we had with, uh, same if we have with sweet case, I can have default values on our match as well. So here, for example, I have a default value that if anything does, have, does match, I'm gonna be default. Very, very powerful feature. Um, I can call functions on my, on my match as well. So imagine that I have a function that I need to validate it. If, if return true, it's gonna return true for, for my, my, my function here. Uh, I can call methods inside my same, the same class. I can even do two validations at the same line. So which means that I can have this X being evaluated as one or five when I use a comma here and also on my on my right side of the match, I can call function as well. So on this code, and this piece of code specifically, I have five being validated here, and it's gonna be returning, it's gonna be attaching to this variable the return of this function bus, for example, right? Uh, it's a very powerful uh, feature that PHP brought to us, and well, we can um, have that to improve our code, to improve readability of our code. Right, and speak of readability, the next thing I want to show you that PHP 8 brought us, it's one very interesting. Imagine this, um, this array, okay? I have an array with have, that has integer and I have some strings on it, right? And I want to do a filter. I want to filter my array to only have integers, right? So I'm gonna use 
the array filter. I pass an, uh, the first the first parameter the first parameter here is the items, and then I pass a callback, a function that's gonna check if it's an integer or, or not. Well, array filter is one of the PHP PHP functions that we use all the time, right? So we know how to use it. I don't need to go to the Google or anything to check on how to use array filter. I know that the first the first one is the first one is the, the array itself, and the second variable, the second method here is um, the second uh, parameter here is the callback, right? I don't need to check that. It's fine. But what about this array fill, right? It's not a function that we use all the time. Uh, and we don't know by just looking at it, you don't know what it's doing. I know that it's gonna create a new array, that it starts with some key and have some, some length, but just by looking at it, I, I can see what it's doing, right? I need to maybe go to Google or maybe have help of my ID to check on what it's doing. And what, what actually is doing is that we have, we're creating an array with the length three that it starts on the key two, and all the values are free pizza, for example, right? But just looking at it, if I don't use this function all the time, I don't know how it's behaving, right? And that's where PHP gave us name and arguments, which is a very nice way to, well, to write code and to have more readability of your code, right? So the same thing as here, we can use name it arguments. The arguments now have names, so you can use it. So now, can you see that's different? I can just look at this array field, and now I can actually see what it's doing, right? I can see that I'm creating an array that start at K2, that's count of three, and all the values are gonna be a free pizza. Lucas, right? sorry, can you change a little bit of the microphone, of your microphone to, yeah, close yep. the mouth because is that better? Yeah. Okay. Way better. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, yeah. So you can see that now it's you can actually uh, see ju just by looking at this at this code you can see what it's doing, right? And especially especially because the most important part of of writing code is not writing code for the machine is writing code for other developers, right? Probably someone is gonna is gonna read your code after, so we need to be uh, you need to be very easy to read. You, of course, you don't. You, you can use that in your own methods, in your own classes. So imagine that you have an employee class to have a construction that have like a string name, a string sector. Uh, so I can just start my 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 class. I can initiate my class like this, pass a name, sector, etc. Uh, this is a very easy example. Probably you're not gonna want to use name it arguments all the time. This is very straightforward, name and sector. So maybe you don't need to use that. But a situation like this, where you have, for example, a user class, and you have um, uh, we receive three arguments here, which the first one is an a, 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 a boolean value admin, and the second one is a boolean value uh, if it's active or not. And you try to initiate this class like this, could be a little bit well difficult to read, right? True, false, but what does true, false mean? If you use name arguments, you can have something like this to initiate your class. So you can start to saying like, yeah, that's an admin, that's active, and that's the rules, right? It's very, very straightforward when you start reading it. Uh, you can use name arguments on any random order. So I have, I can, well, I can, if I have default values, um, I can, well, yeah, I can use them in random order, so which means that I can, I don't need to follow the orders if I'm using name arguments. I have integer A, B, and C. I can start with the B and then with C and then A, so I can use that in random orders. Also, it could be uh, optional, which means that um, if I have default values for all my arguments, for example, I can skip one. Okay, I'm skipping A, for example. Before that, I need to pass the, 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 first, uh, the first argument and then the second one that I want to change. But now I can just use the second arguments, for example. It's very straightforward. I can skip them. So if I have here, for example, three arguments, production, language, and version, I, well, you see that there I'm skipping one of it. 
but if I'm trying, if I start doing the, the name arguments, I cannot just use it in the middle, right? If I start using name arguments, I need to keep with name arguments, right? I can skip in the, the beginning, but I cannot skip after I start using it, right? Because, well, PHP is not going to know which way, way is to go, right? That was name and arguments. I'm rushing a little bit because of time. The uh, last one I want to show you is imagine this class. It's a status class where we have a status class on your code. And you have an array here that's a, it's a protect array that matches the status on your database. I have my database here, the, the value 0, 1, 2, that correlated to draft, publish, and archived. And I have a function that returns me the correct status. If I pass to this function here an integer, it's going to return me the string related. If they do the opposite, it's going uh, to get me the, the integer related, right? Um, see here that I have a lot of validations inside. I have, if it's integer, I have here, um, see if it's something valid. If not, I'm going to throw an exception and things like that. Well, it's very, and then I need to use like this, put passing draft. It's very, it's a, a lot of code to try to that to have that as working. All right. So what PHP gave us, it's enum. It's a new way of uh, creating um, creating classes, create an enum that do all this kind of validations for you. So you simply need to define, for example, an enum status. You have your cases draft, publish, archive that correlated to some integer value could be in your database. And then you can straightforward start using it. You can attach the variables like status, and then you have publish it, and you try to get the value it's going to return for you. Um, if you have the opposite and you have your integer and you try to get the name of, of the value of the enum, you have it here. Uh, and then you can use it as a type as well. And if you have a blog post class, and you want to receive as a status of your blog post, you can use that as a type, which means that now to create a new blog post, post you need to actually pass an instance of this enum here, right? Um, since it's um, it's a class based, you can add functions to it. So, for example, I have a color function, a color method here to match one of my 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 status. I define this function here, we return it, the, the color itself, and I can just use it like that. If I s initiate and status in an archive, I can call the method color, for example, and get the correct color related to it. Well, you see that's a lot of uh, things, new things in PHP. That's just a small part of it. I, I hope this gives you some insights and start you to look more for, for PHP, and that's it. Lucas Giovanni. So we have time for uh, one question, two, maybe if um, it's fit uh, questions. Lucas, this is for you, firstly. Thank, Thank you, you for much. being at WordCamp Lisbon. Any questions? In one, in two, in three, in one, two, three. No questions. Really? Okay. Lucas, you can find thank me later. you. <laughs> well, if you are shy, uh, please.